Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and look at this from Jason Cousins, who's the CEO of Glint, one of my sponsors. IMF notes that financial financial risks have increased rapidly since last update. Wake up, the risks have always been there. Banks only hold 10% of deposits. The rest is invested. Now bank runs don't involve queues. The stampede happens at speed using a banking app. <laughs> Gold is security. And this is a reminder that my sponsor, Glint, when you get a Glint account, that is not a bank account. It's separate. So for me, I have a, uh, one of these Glint accounts and I have my MasterCard debit card so I can spend my gold if I need to. This is kind of like a, a hedge for me. And you can buy it, save it, send it, spend it. All on Glint. Links in the top of the description. Now. Yesterday, I got on the line with this Jake Claver guy. I had seen I had seen him on Molly um, Elmore's show, and me and uh, Brad Combs from Digital Perspectives got on and just I, and I was able to get a couple uh, about three cool clips out of him. But before I do it, I want to show you his cool website. And he's not a sponsor or anything. I just wanted to show it to you. It looks cool. Um, it's at digitalfamilyoffice.io. Now, I'm not a financial advisor, but my understanding is that he is. And so the things you're about to see in his vid these clips in his video, they're things to think about. So you might want to go check his website out. Again, it's uh, digitalfamilyoffice.io. Now, in this clip, he's, he's using a hypothetical. Let's say you have 300,000 XRP. Hypothetically, and it goes to $100. That's $30 million. Listen to this. Somebody that holds... A a substantial amount of XRP and what that might mean, whatever it means to you. Um, if so, I'll, I'll look at it this way. Here in the US, there's a gift tax threshold of 12.92 million per individual. If you're married, that's $25.84 million. And when you move your assets into an estate, there's an estate tax or gift tax that'll be on that for anything over that amount. So let's say you've got 300,000 XRP. Just as an example, a uh, hypothetical goes to $100, okay? You're looking at $30 million. At that point, when you move that into an estate in order to protect yourself and, and set things up for the future, you're gonna be looking at a 40% tax on anything above the amounts I mentioned before. Whether you're single or married, you're still gonna owe 40% tax, whether you cash out or not. And so that's a consideration you wanna take in um, and make sure you're being proactive about. Um, it would be ideal if you could set those structured up beforehand, before you reach those amounts so that you don't incur those tax penalties. Um, and then once it was inside those vehicles, um, whether it be you know a holding company that's structured inside of an LLC, or I'm sorry, inside of a trust, um, or if you wanted to lease your assets from your holding company inside your trust, to another entity so that it could, you know, do whatever it was going to do with those assets in order to produce income and pay you and distributions out of the trust or from that company to you as an employee. Um, there's a lot of different ways to, ways to go about it in order to mitigate tax obligations. Uh, but the largest consideration in the short term for people, I think, is that gift tax for when they do move this into an estate. All right. Now, folks, I want you to understand this is, these are the kind of things that the adults that are listening to me are thinking about, okay? The children are all worried about being mad at Ripple and for st stupid things, Ripple liquidity hub and whether it's gonna have XRP and trying to point me. That's children's stuff. This is what the adults are thinking about. These kind of things. All right, here's another one. Ideally, you do exactly this. So you find a custodian that will hold your assets and then you will find somebody else that will lend against those assets because loans against your assets are not taxable. And that's what the wealthiest people in the world do with their private equity um, and all of their other resources. They will acquire assets and then take loans against them to live their lifestyle or invest in other things. So you don't experience any capital gains tax with that. Um, so you'll be able to park it 
and this is speculation, but based on the conversations I've had, makes sense. Uh, you'll park it with PolySign, they will custody the assets for you, and then you would go to Goldman Sachs or Fidelity or Merrill Lynch or one of these other uh, financial institutions, and then they will issue the line of credit against it that you'll be able to draw down at a low interest rate. Right. So when I, when I make the reference to what adults are doing in all of this, folks, the, t- when the markets are down like this, the adults are planning and thinking about, okay, how do I, how do, what do I do that's smart moves right now? <laughs> They're not getting bogged down in all the negativity and going negative on, oh, oh, the market's down and therefore the world's coming to an end. Not if you really believe in this thing, okay? So, so I don't get bogged down in all that stuff. I'm focused on the, my eyes are on the prize, and I believe, I believe that I know what I hold in XRP, and I believe that XRP is a much bigger thing than most people realize. And so for that reason, the kind of things he's talking about, in fact, I may, I may have to get online with him and talk about some of these things myself, but I'm fascinated. Now, check this part out. Now, here he's talking about trusts and LLCs. Listen to this. I might have to refresh that. Let's do this. As an individual, if you've held it longer than a year, you're looking at capital gains tax here in the U.S. of 15 to 20 percent, depending on the amount that you're going to take. And as an individual, you don't have a way to offset those tax obligations. However, if your assets are inside of a trust uh, or an LLC, there are a lot of different opportunities that you can use to offset or mitigate those tax obligations that you would incur uh, if you were to cash out. All right. So again, that's his website, digitalfamilyoffice.io, and I appreciate that. Now, I was talking about the Ripple. There was a big old controversy going on yesterday about the Ripple liquidity hub, uh, liquidity hub and the fact that Ripple had not mentioned um, that XRP was, was um, going to be used. Well, my gut, when I first saw this, I said, okay, well, they're, they're taking that out of the marketing here just to be play this politically correct until this lawsuit's over. Okay, here, but then what they did is later on in the afternoon yesterday, when I guess they saw it, they put out another article and this is what it said about the XRP. It says XRP will be evaluated along with other tokens for support within the product. We look forward to supporting XRP as it receives regulatory clarity in the US. Well, from a business perspective, that's the diplomatic thing to do is do it the way they're doing it here and i get it i'm not offended by it um again planning <laughs> that's the kind of stuff that 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 uh, um you know a lot of people say it a different way a lot of people say well these are the times when you focus on building and yes that's right okay well from a from my perspective i'm not i'm not like a developer or anything like that well my version of building is continuing to um, cover the news in crypto and for my own personal, for myself personally, doing the kind of planning and thinking that uh, Jake was talking about in those clips. Um, that's, it's the smart thing to do. All right, Mr. Intuitive, who is the official cool guy of the Digital Asset Investor channel, says the crypto gurus keep telling you that Bitcoin is untouchable. Sweden drives final nail in Bitcoin's mining industry with a tax hike. Those taxes can accomplish all sorts of things, folks. Then Elon Musk has a, he's officially created an open AI chat GPT rival called, what do you know, X.AI Corp. Um, then this is, um, uh, what's his face, Ron Hammond. Ron Hammond, he's a lobbyist, a crypto lobbyist more or less in DC, used to work for Ripple, I believe. Um, listen to what he says is going on in D.C. I'd say on Capitol Hill, there definitely is a, a noticeable difference here. You know, we have folks like Coinbase who has spent years on the ground educating policymakers about their business model and what they do. 
Uh, you know, even when I was a Hill staffer on Capitol Hill uh, back in 2017, I met with Coinbase several times to learn about their product and services. Binance was nowhere to be seen. Um, most exchanges had no presence in DC. Obviously, that's changed a lot in the past six years, and we've seen a lot of engagement from stakeholders. But Binance came especially very late to the game here. And that's after a multitude of issues with uh, potential money laundering accusations, other enforcement actions coming down the pipeline. And it seems like they're more playing uh, cover here, or at least DC has been spending the six plus years being educated to know, hey, we have a US company that's been complying with regulation or trying to comply with regulation with the SEC, like Coinbase, and yet Cyril is served with a Wells notice, and they have taken every approach to try to be compliant and to try to engage. We have Binance who did the opposite, and it, the shoe may drop pretty soon, but they uh, are also getting the same, uh, unfortunately, lawsuits as well. And so it's this is the issue that we have in D.C. is that no matter the approach you take, it seems like you're still going to be at the end of a Wells notice or enforcement action. And that's no way to regulate. Yeah, it's no way to regulate. So that's what all these people are dealing with. Now, Hester Pierce, apparently yesterday, they, um, they uh, the SEC put out another release and she said, in addition to ironing this shirt, which republishes code from a comment letter, will I need to register? Uh, will I need to register as an exchange before wearing it? It depends, per the SEC latest release. So she had a, a problem with that. Um, now, we live, boy, do we live in some weird. Look, let me tell you what happens to a. Let me tell you what happens to a country when the financial crisis happens and nobody goes to jail. Let me tell you what happens to a country when the elites never, they can commit all the crimes they want and nobody goes to jail. What happens is the boldness of these people gets larger and larger and larger until they're at the point where ah, we don't care what the public thinks. We'll just flip them the bird publicly. Well, that's what it feels like here. As you watch this, this guy was the CEO of Celsius and all of those people that had money on the on his platform to this day my understanding is that they can't get access to their money it's it's all tied up in a bankruptcy and he's out hanging out at a at a freaking crypto conference what in the world's going on oh, we made it. oh we made that's it. about as brazen as it gets right there he's got bodyguards all around him now, just when you think that it could that it couldn't be any more brazen, we had this yesterday because Laura Shin and all of her friends they're trying to now uh, start. This is how they always do it, folks. You, they the these these media who are basically captured media. They start by saying, "Oh, this is look FTX. They're gonna." They're going to now revive FTX and they'll all talk about it on the first wave like it's all crazy and everything. Then on the next wave, it'll sound a little less crazy. And by the time, by the time uh, they actually do revive this, what looked like a money laundering operation involving plenty of high powered politicians and people, by the time they quote revive it, everybody will be living crazy and everybody will act like it's normal. Seems like we're living a lot of crazy these days. So their first salvo is reports are swirling that FTX may be revived. What's your take? Well, my take is too big to fail money laundering operation. That's what that is. That thing looks like to me. Um, now, speaking of crazy, I just I just happened to run across this video. We have we've shown it before, but I took this screenshot and you can't make this stuff up. This is back. Joseph Lubin actually did a YouTube. Now he's a founder of Ethereum, founder of, cons of Consensus. He actually did a YouTube conference where he, he goes on and the title was Why Ethereum is Undervalued. And I'm, I just thought to myself, just imagine the field day in court that the SEC would have had with Ripple, Brad Garlinghouse, and Chris Larson. If Brad Garlinghouse had held a YouTube that Ripple's never, or Brad Garlinghouse had never done anything bordering on something like this, not even close. But imagine what they would have said in court if Brad Garlinghouse had held a, 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 a forum on YouTube called Why XRP is Undervalued. We, we are surrounded by lies and corruption and absurdity, folks. Surrounded by it. It is unbelievable what we're living through. 
it makes me sick for my children the, to, to, that, the, that they've, they're going to be in this country or be living in this life for the next 30, 40 years. And what are they going to live? What in the if somebody doesn't finally do something about all this corruption, what are what are they? What's their life? The what is the the lives? Of, what are the lives of people in the United States going to be like if all of this is continues to be allowed to stand? That's the question I ask myself every day when I watch the news going to bed at night or something. I'm like, what is going on? The bad guys get away with everything now. This is the world we live in now. All the bad guys that are committing actual crimes. Nothing happens to them, but they go after the people that aren't committing crimes. I mean, that's that's Nazi stuff, folks, the, what we're watching right now. This is the kind of stuff that the brown shirts did. I mean, they went after the good people and just arrested them. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button. Tell your friends and family we live in the age of lies, deception, and a